Hey folks, welcome to What's New, the Peter Lerman Outdoors radio show, and I'm your host, Peter Lerman. Spring fishing now in full bloom in most of the mid and southern states, so most of us are out there fishing and getting those winter cobwebs shaken free. So I want to thank you for tuning into our show today. Today on the show, we have a very special guest that can catch fish not only during the spawn, but any other time of the year and from anywhere in the country, and do it consistently. And I'm talking about the BASS Elite Series and FLW Touring Pro from Falcon Rods Pro, Jason Christie. We're going to talk to Jason about his great start to the season and the new products that he'll be using on tour this year that will help him get back to the Bassmaster Classic and help him win the Angler of the Year race. However, before we get to Jason, let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back right after this. Hey folks, Peter here from What's New, the Peter Lerman Outdoors radio show. And if you listen to my show, you know that I'm a big proponent of kids fishing. I would like to invite you to my 10th annual Peter Larmond Outdoors Kids Charity Fishing Tournament, benefiting Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Lanark County. It's on May 14th, and it's only $10 a child. What we do is we break the anglers down into age groups. We fish from 10 to 2, stopping at noon for lunch, which we provide to the young anglers. Each child walks away with a prize, and the top three in each category walks away with prizes and a medal. And to top it off, we also have a trophy that we give to the angler that catches the most fish. All the fishing is from the docks. May 14th, Rideau Ferry Harbor Marina on Big Rideau Lake, 110 Coots Bay Road, Rideau Ferry. Prizes generously donated by George's Marine and Sports, Lou's, Angler's Choice, Livingston Lures, Andrus's, Your Independent Grocers, Rideau Winery, Tammy's Nails, Freedom Tackle, and the list goes on. So come on out, May 14th, Rideau Ferry Harbor Marina, for the 10th annual Peter Lerman Outdoors Kitsch Charity Fishing Tournament. See you there. Are you looking for quality fishing tackle from knowledgeable staff that use the products and have experience in fishing? And do you want a dependable tackle shop that carries all the latest in some of the fishing industry's best known companies? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then Pro J Fishing Tackle in Scarborough, Ontario is that tackle shop. Jasper and the staff at Pro J Fishing Tackle will get you ready for walleye, bass, crappie fishing season. Pro J Fishing Tackle carries some of the popular brands like Shimano, Luz, Daiwa, Mega Bass, Angler's Choice, Yamamoto, Jackal, Sunline, just to name a few. Make sure you drop in and check out all of their products at their store location at 3467 Shepherd Avenue East, Toronto, or give them a call at 416-913-8305 and check them out on Facebook. So if you're looking for a quality tackle with excellent customer service from knowledgeable staff, Pro J Fishing Tackle is where you need to shop before going out and catching that trophy of a lifetime. Hey folks, welcome back. Today on the show we have Falcon Rods Pro Jason Christie on the show. Jason, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, glad to be here. Jason, you, I mean, you started off with an incredible, uh, you know, you had a great run at the Classic. Um, you know, I know you want to put that behind you, but you had a fantastic tournament. I know it didn't end the way you wanted it to, but you know what? You, momentum carried you on. You guys went on to, uh, uh, to uh, Palatka, Florida. Tell us about that tournament. I, I know you had a great, another top 10 finish. Well, Florida's a really fun place to fish. I, uh, I'm actually considering on buying a, you know, like a house for whenever I retire down there, just I mean, that's how much I like to fish down there, but it can be really frustrating tournament fishing down there just because it, you know, it relies a lot on big bites. And, you know, going into that tournament, I was hoping to, uh, you know, kind of take off where I left off a couple of years ago there. And, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. And I had to kind of scrap everything and and start over. And, and, uh, you know, I was fortunate. And, and the rule is in Florida, if you catch one big one today, you're going to get paid. If you catch two big ones, then uh, they're probably going to make the top 12. And uh, and I was lucky. I was fortunate. I did some things and made some good decisions at the right times. And, I mean, for me to come out of Florida with the top 10 is, I mean, I would have been satisfied just to, get, just to get paid down there and get out of there. But to come out of there with the top 10, it's really good start for the season. It's kind of right where you wanted, like you said, you wanted to leave off. What were, you said you made some changes from where you wanted to leave off two years ago. What were those changes that you made that, uh, were they on the water things or were they stuff that you found during practice? No, it was, you know, I 
figured out something the last day there a couple of years ago I was sight fishing. Of course, a lot of people sight fish there, but I was doing it, you know, in areas that there wasn't a lot of people. And and that's what I wanted to do, and that's what I intended on doing. And, and we just had a lot of wind, and, and uh, it was hard to see. And, you know, with a lot of wind you're, and, and a lot of guys wanting to sight fish, you're putting a lot of guys in one small area. And I finally just... Uh, scrapped the plan, you know, and went to a different lake and and uh, just started fishing and, and was getting bit pretty consistently. I was just flipping a a yum dinger and a yum Christie crawl around and and in reeds and on boat docks and undercut banks and things like that. And and uh, you know, it was one of those plans where hey, this is this will probably just get me through the event with the top forty or something and get me out of here and and. Uh, you know, the first day I caught a big one, and then the third day I caught two big ones and moved up. You know, I caught a big bag the third day and moved up. So, you know, it really wasn't uh, doing a lot of changing on the water. It was really just, you know, we talk about a lot as professional anglers about not having any preconceived notions, and I did going there. You know, I wanted to catch them the same way I did the time before, and and, and, and that hardly ever works out. So, uh you know, I just had to kind of start over, and, and I got to do something I like to do, you know, flip and, and throw a frog a little bit and, and uh, really settle down in an area. I, I tend to do better in tournaments whenever I get in an area, you know, and, and just fish rather than running and, and bouncing around a lot, and that's what I was able to do in Florida is just settle down in, one, in you know, one 10-mile stretch and just fish. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you brought up a really good point, and, and I, I just want to reiterate that to, to all our listeners. Um, you said that you want you wanted the kind of fish, kind of the same thing, sight fishing, what you did two years ago. You said that hardly ever pays off. And I know, and I, I make the same mistake every now and then, too, especially on my home body of water. Uh, we try to refish the past. Folks, if you're listening to this, you really pay attention to what Jason's saying here, is that he's telling us, even the pros sometimes try to do that but then they know that it very seldom works uh so sometimes pre-fishing is always an important uh part to any tournament fishing and and you know i think jason you nailed it on the head there when you said it, it seldom works out so i mean guys it doesn't get any better when you when you get a a successful tournament angler or professional angler like jason christie telling you you know fishing history doesn't always pay off you really got to take that uh Take that to heart and put it to, to good use. Congratulations, you got your top ten. Uh, now you guys are off to uh, Georgetown, South Carolina, uh, for for next weekend's uh, Elite Series. There, are you planning on doing anything different? Or are you just going to go out and, and and fish the way you normally do, and then just make decisions as they go through a practice? Well, I'm hoping I get to fish the way that I want to. You know, flipping and throwing spinner bait and. And, uh, you know, fishing shallow, but the thing about this event is this is the unknown for the year. We, we have no history here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors floating around about where, uh, you know, where the right place is going to be. And, and, you know, those hardly ever, ever work out too. But if this is a big area and, one of the things I don't like about these kind of events is there's a lot of miles in between productive areas. And whenever you only have two and a half days of practice to dissect, you know, a, a body of water this big, it makes it tough. And you almost got to get a little bit lucky uh, to kind of land on uh, the right area during practice. And, you know, not only land on the right area during practice, but this is a tidal system. So, you have to be in the right area at the right time or at the right tide, you know, to get some confidence. And, and this this is the event that scares me for the year. I mean, uh, you know, we could possibly make it, be making some really long boat rides. And, you know, it just, in, in events like this, you don't have time to adjust throughout the day. You know, you have a plan, you take off, and, and uh, you get three to four and a half hours to fish and and you go do it and and you come back and it's hard to do that and it's really hard to do that four days in a row so this you know this is one of the events that uh a lot of people circle events throughout the year you know looking forward to it and i like new events like this but this is one that 
you kind of underline thinking, man, I don't know how this is going to go down and, and, uh, really got to, uh, do a lot of work and, and, uh, practice, you know, really hard and try to develop a strategy that will work, you know, in South Carolina. So, I mean, I'll ask you a question and, you don't have to give out specifics, but you said this was a big body of water. A tournament angler that's going to go out and fish new bodies of water. And, and as you said, this is a big body of water. How do you go about dissecting that body of water to, to, to not waste so much time? Someone that may not be used to it, when they look at the, at, at the maps, when they do their, their research at home, and they look at the maps, the bodies of water could be overwhelming just in their, in their size. So how would you dissect this lake? Or anybody, it doesn't have to be this one, but any new body of water. Yeah, first of all, you know, this is a river system. It's not going to be, uh, you know, there's not going to be a lot of deep fishing going on. Most of it's going to be shallow. Whenever you're fishing shallow, you're fishing uh, visual, visual targets. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for, you know, areas that have a lot of visual targets, grass, you know, lay down stumps, docks, those kind of things. And then also, uh, I'm looking at the time of year, uh, this we should be somewhat around the spawn, so a lot of the fish should be uh, in areas where uh, the spawn it can happen. You know, you can't spawn, or it's hard for them to spawn on the main river channel, you know, and when the tide's moving. So I, I kind of assume that a lot of guys are going to be looking for uh, dead-end creeks and sloughs and pockets and things like that. And, and whenever I go to these lakes, not only South Carolina, that's, that's a lot of the... You know, you look at time of year that that, uh, and that's the first big clue is, hey, what what should the fish be doing? And and that really eliminates a big part of the lake. It's just like going to Kentucky Lake in you know June. I mean, those fish, there's millions of ledges, and most tournaments are going to be one out there on the ledges. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it just, you know, you can really not. I don't want to say by by map study or anything like that because I don't do a lot of that stuff. Uh, some guys do. I just, uh, I'm more kind of fish the, you know, fish the moment. But you can eliminate a lot of those kind of things just from fishing experience, you know, uh, time of year, uh, water level, you know, and things like that. And and uh, you can kind of get a starting point. And, and the biggest thing is you just have to, you know, you have to get some bites and, and gain some confidence in practice. I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to catch a ton of fish in practice. I just want to get a few bites. I want to visually look at the fish, see what stage they're in, you know, uh, you know, what they look like, if they're healthy or not. And then I just want to see a lot of areas and, and really be able to, uh, during the tournament, just kind of, I want to get an idea in practice, but I want to figure it out during the tournament. That's the best way I know how to put it. Bert, but so, you know, you, you brought up a, a lot of good uh, pointers that uh, hopefully our listeners are jotting these down. And if not, they're going to re-listen to this episode or download it again off Spreaker.com. It's great to hear how, you know, we've had other anglers on the show. You know, we've had Bill Lone, we've had Edwin Evers, Randy Howell, uh, Boyd Duck. I mean, we've had a lot of, of, of successful tournament anglers and Everyone does it differently, so there's really no true. This is how you do it per se. It's right. It's more what you're adapted to, what you're comfortable with, and how, you, like you said, uh, during practice and every time you go out, you gain more confidence throughout the the, the allotted practice time or every time you go out to pre-fish. Yeah, that's one thing about bass fishing. You know, uh, everybody wants to make rules, you know, and things that it only happens this way. Well, it doesn't. It, it, that's not the case. I mean, things uh, things change, and and there's always exceptions to every rule. Uh, you know, involving bass fishing, there there are there's things that we can do that that happen more. Uh, they're, they're more probable, you know. And but there's always exceptions, and and there's always things to learn. And and uh, it is kind of funny because fishing around these guys for you know so many years you see guys and you know guys and you know their styles and things like you said bill owen i know bill owen's style if bill owen's catching them he's catching them uh you know probably shallow and probably in some dirty water now edwin is a guy that really you don't know about i mean i actually stay with him and and he's one of those guys that puts 20 rods on the deck every day and you don't know how he's going to catch them. And it's just funny, all these guys have a particular style, and they have their own, 
you know, kind of philosophy of bass fishing, and it's really, it's really funny. I mean, we we agree sometimes, but it's funny that a lot of times we disagree on. You know the the things that the bass do and, and how they act. Again, you're right, and and it's it's all about. I think it was a, it was a quote that I read. I think maybe in Bassmaster magazine where um, Kevin Van Dam said, "I always try to fish my." Or it was Mike Iaconelli that said, uh, "I always try to fish my strengths in every tournament." And your strength may not be the same as, as you said. It's not the same as Edwin's. Is may not be the same as Bill's or, or whomever. But uh, everyone's got their own strengths, and that's what works for them in that particular tournament. And I know there was a there was an article in Bassmaster magazine just about that, um, where they were talking about do you become like a a specialist in a certain technique as opposed to like a jack of all trades, right? Where I'm a I'm a power fisherman. I I can fish crankbaits, spinner baits. I can flip. I can do it all. Or do you go back to the guys like? Uh, you know, like Denny Brower, and if, if it's a flipping bite, they're they're unbeatable. So it, it's cool that you mentioned that, that, you know, sometimes you guys agree, but a lot of times you disagree on what works and what bass are doing. So thank you for sharing that with us, Jason. That, that That's cool. Jason, we got to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, uh, I know you got a great array of sponsors, uh, and you got your own, your own baits out there with Yum and that. When we come back, will you tell us anything that's new out there on the market that uh, that you're going to be using to uh, to help you succeed this year? Absolutely. Perfect. So, folks, you're listening to What's New, the Peter Lerman Outdoors radio show on WRVORadio.com. <laughs> Livingston Lures. Livingston Lures is committed to bringing fishermen everywhere innovative, technologically advanced lures designed to flat out catch fish in fresh and salt water. With an exciting new line of crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, topwater baits, jerk baits, and wake baits featuring a unique sound and vibration technology. Livingston Lures is set to make some real noise across the fishing industry. Hey folks, welcome back. On the show we have Falcon Rods Pro, uh, Jason Christie, and uh, before the break, I asked Jason if he was going to share with, share with us some of the new products that he's going to be using to make them successful on the tour. So, Jason, what's uh, what do you got up your sleeve that uh, that's going to that's going to help you succeed again this year? Well, that's that's really a pretty long list. Um, yeah, I mean, from baits to reels, some of the baits, some of the soft plastics uh, by Yum. You know, we have the new. Uh, Yum Pole Slim Bait, which is the Slim Bait that I used uh, during the Classic, and I've done a lot of, and actually, I received that bait the week of the Classic, and got a lot of confidence in it, and I've been doing a lot of filming with it, it's just, a, it's a bait that's going to be around for a long time, it's really versatile, I can put it on a swim jig, I can throw it you know, just by itself, I can put it on a big spinner bait like I did in the classic, and and uh, it's just a bait that I feel like is going to catch some, you know, some better quality fish. And you know, we we've added a couple of baits. Uh, you know, like we the Christie Critter, the Yum Christie Critter, has been really effective for me the last couple of years. We brought the a baby Christie Critter, which is going to be like a really good smallmouth. Uh, you know, a largemouth tight fishing bait, a Carolina rig bait. Um, you know, we, we're bringing a lot of uh, a lot of new ideas and stuff. And, and you know, we're already working on on uh, you know stuff for next year, stuff that's going to come out of ICAST. We have a really cool bait uh, that's hopefully going to come out of ICAST that I think is is going to be. Uh, And, and, uh, you know, but, I mean, we have a, 
there's a, the list goes on and on. You know, one of the cool things that I don't talk a lot about that I'm that I'm really getting hooked on, and I don't know if it's because of my age or what, but uh, in the classic, I was using a new line from Sunline. It's uh, it's slipping and pitching line. It's a fluorocarbon, but I guess the older I get, the harder it's getting for me to actually see this fluorocarbon throughout the day. And I'm a big line watcher. I watch my line a lot for those real subtle bites. And this line is, uh, it's actually three foot of high vis and then three foot of clear. And it's fluorocarbon and it's quality fluorocarbon. It runs like that through, through your entire school. So you can tie you know, at the bottom of three foot of clear, and then all the way back to your reel, you have, uh, uh, you know, you have a high vis, clear high vis, and I can see it really, really good. And and uh, for those days when the sun gets high and you're kind of fishing that off color of water and and you can hardly see it, you know, that's that's something I would recommend. And and uh, you know, I ordered a few spools of it for the classic because I knew the water was going to be dirty and and. I've actually ordered a lot more just to use throughout the season. And, and like I said, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or if we just had conditions where, where you know, that fluorocarbon is hard to see mm-hmm. under under the sun. But uh, I think it's really cool. I mean, I can see I can see my line, uh, you know, from daylight till dark. And you said this is by Sunline? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's by Sunline, and it's uh, it's a flipping uh, pitching line, and uh, it's it's a floor card, you know, and everything that Sunline makes, uh, from shooter to sniper to this line, is, is from the braid is a high quality line, and and uh, you know I've I've been doing some spinner baiting with it and some flipping, and and uh, I love it. I mean, and I like you know. I've kind of shied away from the high vis line in the past because I didn't want to tie it directly to my lure, thinking that you know the fish might see it. But so <laughs> with with what we have now, where you have where it's just intervals of clear and, and high vis, you can actually tie to the clear. So three foot of line in front of my spinner bait or in front of my jig, you know, is is clear, and and they can't see it, but I can see it, you know, from the boat. So it's it's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, you know what, J- Jason? Uh, you know, it, it's been great chatting with you. And I mean, we could talk. We can go on and on. And like you said, you've got a, a slew of products that uh, that are out there. So I would just suggest that everyone goes to uh, christyfishing dot com, and you can go there and underneath his, uh, uh, you can see all of Jason's sponsors, and uh, he's got the new stuff there, and and and. and everything else that you need to, to know about what's going on with Jason on the, on, on the road. So Jason, uh, I know you're, you know, before the, before we started talking, you said you were stuck in traffic on the interstate. So hopefully you're moving along and you're heading your way to South Carolina now. And, uh, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it was great chatting with you. I want to wish you all the best of luck, uh, in the upcoming season and, uh, stay safe and, 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 you know, thanks again. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, you know, for some of the fans that want to follow day to day, we do a lot of videos and stuff. I mean, they can. Uh, I have a Facebook page, uh, Christy Fishing, and I want to make sure it's Christy Fishing, not Jason Christy Fishing. It seems that there's another Jason Christy out there, but Christy Fishing, and we do a lot of uh, videos and, you know, the results and kind of some personal stuff. Uh, you know, some big fish catches and stuff like that. So just have them uh, check it out. Right on. What we'll do is we'll put a link on on, uh, on our show's Facebook page uh, directly to yours, so that uh, if they're not sure which one, they can they can get it through us, and we'll uh, we'll have that up there uh, for you. We'll have a link to your Facebook page so people can follow along with you. And and again, don't forget, folks, when uh, when actually Jason's out there on. Uh, um, on tour, don't forget to uh, check him out on uh, at Bassmaster.com and Bass Tracks and that. And best of luck to you, Jason, and, and thanks very much for for doing this with us. You're welcome, man. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Lou's, building innovative products that are faster, lighter, and stronger. Georgia's Marine and Sports making fun of reality. Livingston Lures: the difference is clear. 
Mercury Marine, number one in the water. Nitro Boats, driven to be the best. It's our passion. And Pro J Fishing Tackle out of Scarborough, Ontario. Folks, take a kid fishing the other future of our sport and practice catch and release. Remember, work hard, but fish harder. I'm your host, Pete Alarmin, and thank you for tuning in to What's New, the Pete Alarmin Outdoors radio show on WRVO Radio Network. And Lord willing, we will talk to you again next week as we bring you What's New. Thanks for listening.